3321. מי זה בעצם הבן אדם הזה? מה יש לי להגיד עליו? הוא חלוץ, הוא לוחם, אוהב את המדינה הזאת. הוא אחד האנשים שהכי השפיעו עליי. התאהבתי באיש. מצאתי בו פרטנר אמיתי. הוא האדמו"ר שלי. תארו לכם, הוא ראש ממשלת ישראל. פחד אלוהים. הייתי יושב שבעה על מדינת ישראל. סוף החרום הציוני. אז מי אתה בעצם באמת? נשמה גדולה. שובר לבבות. אינטלקטואל. אל תטעו, הוא פוליטיקאי. שמאלני. רדיקלי. אוהב ערבים. מסוכן מאוד למדינה. קומוניסט. קומוניסט. קומוניסט! אי אפשר לא לאהוב אותו, אבל הוא פשוט טועה. אבל אולי זה החן שבו. מאה חוקים בעשר שנים, אין, אין דבר כזה. החוקים שלו פשוט שינו את פני המדינה. לראות אותו נלחם למען החלשים בכל מקום. הוא יודע שאנשים... מעולם לא יצרו עבור. הוא לוחם צדק, הוא מהפכן, הוא המתלבש הכי גרוע בכנסת. יהיה טוב, מה אתה כל כך רציני? פטריוט אמיתי, פמיניסט. פנומן. אוהב להט"בים. אוהב אדם. מנש אמיתי. עזרה בדרך. עזרה בדרך שלך. עזרה בדרך שלך, עזרה בדרך, עזרה בדרך שלך, עזרה בדרך, עזרה בדרך. אם היה לו כיפה, הוא היה בש"ס. That was Comrade Dove. We'll get back to that in just a few minutes. Welcome once again to the Radical Imagination. I'm your host, Jim Vretos. I'm a sociologist and criminologist who's taught at John Jay College of Criminal Justice and Yeshiva University here in New York. A good chronicler and interpreter of the human scene often has to come to grips with issues the culture and probably the author himself has considerable difficulty and pain in confronting and discussing. Most creative people would love to do it in an entertaining way that could open and move people to be more constructive and thoughtful about their fears and hurts. If you're able to accomplish that through your work in your own culture and it rings true to people around the world, you've truly hit the artistic jackpot. We have a guest on the Radical Imagination today who has done just that. Barack and his brother Tomer started the independent Heyman Brothers film company and have become two of the leading filmmakers in Israel, making over 20 documentaries for television and cinema with social, political, and very personal orientations. Their movies have addressed some of the deepest open wounds and untold stories in Israel and have won them the Academy Award in Israel, a special jury award in the International Documentary Film Festival, an invitation to the Human Rights Film Festival in Paris, the Audience Award in Taiwan, Best Documentary at the Toronto Film Festival, and numerous other international awards in Torino, Milan, New York, Taipei, Shanghai, Copenhagen, Los Angeles, Zurich, Melbourne, Moldova, Berlin, Bucharest, and elsewhere. Barak teaches cinematography in two Israeli schools and is involved in the production of several new projects which we'll be talking about in just a few minutes. We're so happy to have him Skyping in from Israel, but before we welcome Barack, we're gonna play another short clip from Comrade Dov. This is where Dov is going to the border at Gaza. What starts out as a fight turns out to be a love affair once the ultra-religious right-wing journalist interviewing him realizes that Dov has religious family roots. שלום חברים, היי נומיקה, היי מוסי, תודה רבה, איזה שלט. נשמח ממך לכמה מילים? בהחלט. אז אפשר לעשות לרקע של המפגינים? בטח. תודה. אתה מצלם? כן. רגע, סדרת הזקן. סדרת הזקן, מוכנים? אתה תספורת, הזקן. רצים. בסדר, יש? יש. חבר הכנסת דב חנין מהרשימה המשותפת, אתה מגיע היום לסיור יחד עם תושבים באזור עוטף עזה, הנגב המערבי ליתר דיוק. בוא תספר לנו מה היה היום בסיור כאן. אני פגשתי כאן תושבים 
תושבי הנגב המערבי, שבמשך הרבה מאוד שנים משמיעים קול אחר באזור הזה. האנשים שאני פגשתי מבינים שההידרדרות שנעשית בעזה, כמובן היא אסון לפלסטינים, אבל היא בסופו של דבר גם בעיה לישראלים. כל פעם עוד מלחמה ועוד מלחמה ועוד מלחמה ועוד מלחמה. עכשיו אומרים, גם נהדק את המצור וגם נכה בהם עוד יותר בכוח. את כל הדברים האלה כבר ניסינו. הגיע הזמן לנסות דרך אחרת. במקום מצור על עזה, צריך לייצר פתרונות לעזה. ובמקום להתנתק מהפלסטינים ולא לדבר איתם, צריך להפך, להידבר איתם ולנסות ביחד איתם, עם ההנהגה של הפלסטינים, להגיע להסדר של שלום שיבטיח לנו ולהם עצמאות וצדק. ואנחנו רואים שוב ושוב ושוב שכל פעם, אתה יודע, זה התחיל בעזה והאריכו תחילה. אחרי זה ראינו, הגיעו גם כל שאר השטחים בגוש קטיף, ועוד כמה דברים, חברון וכל הדברים האלו. זאת אומרת שאין לזה סוף. אנחנו נולדים, לא, יש לזה סוף. רוצים. מה הסוף? הסוף שאנחנו לא נהיה פה. לא, לא, לא. הסוף הוא שאנחנו נהיה והם יהיו. יש כאן שני עמים בארץ הזאת, ואף אחד מהם לא מתכוון ללכת לשום מקום. ולשני העמים יש עיר אחת שהיא מאוד מאוד יקרה, אתה יודע, ירושלים. אתה אדם, אתה אדם שומר... זה לא ממש מופיע, אתה יודע, בקוראן לא היה איזה מקום מקודש כזה שנקרא ירושלים? אתה לא רוצה, אתה ממש לא רוצה להתווכח איתי כרגע על הקוראן, חבל על הבערות הזאת בהיסטוריה. קוראים לירושלים אל-קודס מאות שנים. אל-קודס, אתה יודע מה זה? הקדושה. הקדושה, נכון. הקדושה, בערבית, הם קוראים לזה. מה הם עשו עם הקדושה הזאת מ-48 עד 67? מה הם עשו עם... מה, אתה ראית את מסגדי... או, מה הם עשו עם זה עד 48? באמת, דברי הבל כאלה, אני לא ציפיתי מבן אדם משכיל כמוך לשמוע. אתה מזלזל בקדושה אני לא מציע לך לעשות את זה. אתה בן אדם מאמין. אל תזלזל, אל תזלזל בדת של אנשים אחרים. אל תזלזל בדת של אנשים אחרים. אל תזלזל בדת של אנשים. אל תעשה את זה. חבר הכנסת דב חנין, תודה רבה. תודה לך. אני בעצם צאצא של האדמו"ר הזקן. אני קרוי דב בר. על שם ה... בטח. זה הפתעה פצצה זה. רגע, זה אני רוצה שיגבים אצל מולי. בוא, בוא רגע, אביחי. בוא, בוא רגע, צלם לי את זה. עכשיו, רק על חב"ד, רגע. רק על חב"ד, יאללה. יש וידאו? יש וידאו. אוקיי, עכשיו זה נטו לחב"ד. אז חבר הכנסת דב חנין מהרשימה המשותפת, אתה עכשיו מנחית פה פצצה, אתה מפתיע אותנו. אתה אומר שסבא אחד שלך הוא מתנהגת, סבא שני? חב"דניק. חב"דניק. כן, סבא אלתר שלי, יעקב אלתר, היה אחד מראשי חב"ד בארץ. איזה ניגון אתה זוכר? תשמע, אני לא אה, יכול להגיד לך שאני כל כך טוב בזמרה. אין בעיה, אין בעיה. אה, אבל אה, אתה מכיר למשל את כי לא יו אה, כי לא נו אה, כי לא נו אה, אדיר במלוכה, אדיר במלוכה, בחורקה לך, גדודיו יאמרו לך, לך ולך, לך כי לך, לך אף לך ממלכה. חבר'ה, זה דב חנין, זה דב חנין, לא סתם. הוא משלנו, הוא מאנש. הוא חבדניק, כן? יאללה, תודה יקירי. טוב, רגע, מה עם תפילין? יש כוח. יש כוח. טוב, מה עם תפילין? כשיבוא שלום, אני מבטיח להגיע לכאן במיוחד אליך. בסדר. Welcome, Barak, to the Radical Imagination. It's so great to have you here. Thank you very much, I'm very happy to be in your... extremely happy and honored to have you here. We just saw a couple of incredibly wonderful clips from uh, your latest documentary, uh, Comrade Dov. Um, just tell us a little about that effort and uh, the years you put into it, and then we'll talk about so many other works of yours and, and find out what's going on in Israel. But tell us a little about who Comrade Dov is, how you got started on this project, and uh, what you've tried to accomplish with it. Well, Comrade Dov, as you said, it's my latest uh, documentary. I've been working on for quite many years already, and it's been now touring the world, you can say, yeah. mainly in Israel, but not only. We screened it also in New York, in Poland. It's going to cinemas now in Sweden. It's screened next week in uh, Portugal. It's starting to um, get to, to be seen by more and more people. Mm -hmm. It's the story of Dov Henin, He was a parliament member, a Knesset member in the Israeli parliament for 13 years. I have known him for many, many years, actually even before he became a Knesset member. At 2003, three years before he became a Knesset member, I interviewed him for a very little kind of esoteric, cultural, urbanic, Tel Avivian 
a funny magazine named 42 Degrees. And the editor, who knew that I'm quite involved, or at least aware, uh, politically, and very much in the left side, um, told me there is this guy, Dov Henin, whom I never heard about before, um, who is a lawyer, who is an activist, and who is running to the Knesset, and that uh, he recommends me to interview him for this newspaper. And I said, sure, why not? I, have, I had no idea who is the guy. Mm -hmm. And what is it? What is he all about? But uh, I went um, with my little camera, and I interviewed him, and um, I spent maybe two or three days with him, and I literally felt in love. Um, besides uh, uh, erotical, the erotic level, mm -hmm. there was everything there. I was mm -hmm. really getting addicted to him. I, I, mm -hmm. I loved him just so much as a human being as an activist, as a politician, as a left-wing, as a socialist, as a fighter, and um, maybe the most important, as a happy person. Uh, not like many of the people I know and I love and respect, um, who are very deep in the left movement in Israel and uh, great fighters for social uh, justice and peace and uh, all of that. Uh, many of them are very depressed and uh, cynical and sarcastic and uh, very pessimistic and uh, kind of tough vibes, I would say, they have. And I also have sometimes. Um, and this guy, Dov Henin, brought to my life such a refreshing, positive, new, optimistic, good energy, even though he knows maybe better than anyone else how fucked up the situation is, so we, excuse my language, how uh, racist and how capitalist and how brutal and violent and corrupted in so many different ways uh, our society here and our political arena. And uh, still he believes in the goodness of people and still he believes that people create great uh, catastrophes Mm -hmm. and uh, great damage to this mm -hmm. planet mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. people who are the ones who can correct and fix and make things better for everybody so i just got uh, addicted to the presence of this guy in in my life and some years later i decided i want to make a film about him and um, i came to him uh, it was only in 2014, actually, when I started really mm -hmm. to work on the film, mm -hmm. after knowing him for 11 years. And uh, he said, sure, go ahead, Barak, I, I like your films, uh, mm -hmm. and um, I'm happy and I'm proud if you make a film about me, but I'm not sure if it's such a good idea, because I'm a little bit boring, you know? I'm mm -hmm. not so mm -hmm. emotional, and I know you and your brother, Tommy, are very much attracted to very big, emotional, crazy, family, life, dramas, and I won't be able to supply you all of those. So you should think twice if you want to make a film about me. I'm not so sure if you should, if it's a good idea for you. And I said, Dov, I know what I'm doing. And I have known you for 11 years, and I love you, and I think it's terrible that people don't know you, really. And people have very strange image about you. And uh, I want to shrink this gap between this very strange image people have about this very strange left-wing guy, the only Jewish member in the uh, right uh, now, not right now, but lately mm -hmm. in the Arab United list. Um, and between the men that I know is a man that everybody should and can and will love, thanks to yep. my film. And uh, I'm happy to say that in some ways um, it happened. People really fell in love with him. You sure, him. you, Barack, you did the right thing. Uh, I've fallen in love with him through the, the movie that we uh, saw at the other Israeli film festival here in New York just a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Uh, it was absolutely terrific. I look forward so much to having him on the show in about three weeks. Uh, Dove will be on the show. But um, 
he is so uh, addictive of a personality and so necessary on the left, and that's what we try to do on this show as well. Dove would fit in very nicely with, uh, unfortunately, in some ways, uh, well, not unfortunately, but very fortunately, we need more people like Dove in Israel and in the United States because we also have our cynical and depressive um, members of the progressive left, and this show is, is, is about what Dove is about as well, the radical love and the radical transformation of the society structurally and in, in very personal ways, as, as many of your films have, have tried to touch on as well. But I, yeah. I, I must say something, my sure. friend. I don't find anything radical about Dove, not as a human being and not as a politician. Um, the only radical thing I find about him is the fact that he is able to work 17, 18, 19 hours a day, six, seven days a week, 52 weeks in a year. Like this guy has endless energy. He is the hardest worker I've ever met in mm -hmm. my life. And I did meet some people. Um, this is very radical. And also the fact that he is not willing to give up. He is not willing to lose the hope. This is also very radical in a very gray, depressing, melancholic um, time zone we all live in. Uh, but politically, I don't see anything radical about his political agenda, about his political statements, about his political actions. Uh, I think he's the one who makes sense. And I actually think that all the rest, almost all the rest, uh, the nonsense, uh, uh, because well, no, yeah. absolutely, Barack. This is a love fest here. No, I totally agree. It's it's perfectly natural what he's talking about. This is the way it should be, and we'd have a, a, a an incredibly wonderful world if it could be. Uh, I think one of the uh, members, of the, the uh, fellow that was responding in the clip, said, wondering what would happen if he was the prime minister, and I would say the same thing about. Bernie Sanders. I mean, he, he doesn't seem radical to me at all. It's what we should have. You know, national health yes. insurance and so on. Go ahead. So I'm no, agreeing. I'm, I'm agreeing. I'm happy you. you're mentioning Bernie Sanders because actually I, I wish Bernie to get to know Dove and I think he would also fall in love with, fall in love with Dove and uh, I actually uh, dream of showing this film to Bernie Sanders because uh, I think they have a lot in common. Something about being very, very, very clear in the way they talk about life, about politics, about the, sol the problems and about the solutions. When Dov is talking, even if you think completely different than him, you understand exactly what he believes in, what he suggests, how does he look at the, the, the problem which occur, and uh, how does he see the way to get to the solution? Because the way to get to the solution is not less important than the image of the solution itself, because uh, we live in the process, we live in, 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 in the way. We don't live only in the peaks, and uh, we don't live only in the ending point right. of our journey. Right. We live throughout our very difficult and complicated journeys. And Dove is a very, very great par partner for those political journeys because he is able to bring people from a position of being passive to the position of being active. And in some ways, if I have to summarize in few words the DNA of Dove politics, uh, this is what it is all about. Don't be passive. Mm -hmm. Take responsibility on your life, on this planet. And if you think that something is wrong, don't Get involved. wait for pastors to, to, to fix it, mm -hmm. but be part uh, of the people of the group who join forces to fix it. And uh, there is one scene in the film, I don't know if you remember, when he goes to Arad, it's a city in the south of Israel where yeah. all the workers in this towers factory are being fired. And uh, they call him, they ask him to advise them, to guide them in this struggle. And you can really see on their face, on their body language, um, especially in their eyes, 
how passive they are and pessimistic and uh, hopeless and they don't believe anything good can still happen to them. And, and when he talks to them, you see it really in front of your eyes, physically. It's not a metaphor, it's not something spiritual. I mean, it is spiritual, right. but it's very physical as well. It's right. down to earth. Like you can see that from these positions, they're like all of a sudden like, like bringing something different of the heart, of the soul, of the bodies to this universe and, and, and ready to fight. Because life is a lot about fighting, because unfortunately, if you don't fight for justice, there is no justice. And Definitely. if you don't fight for peace, then there is no peace. And if you don't fight for equal rights for whomever, for black people, for women, for uh, mm -hmm. Jews, for, Chris, for Christians, for Ethiopians, for LGBT, um, for every different kind of people who don't have equal rights, I don't think there is any group in the history of humanity that's got the rights the, 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 and equalness without fighting yeah, for it. Absolutely. No one ever gave any rights for anyone just like this, you know, for free. Absolutely. And, 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 and I, I, I admire it about Dove that he's uh, involved sim simultaneously in so many different struggles. And many times people ask him, uh, how do you build this um, hierarchy of struggles? Like, how do you know which struggle to support? Uh, what kind of people you should help? Is it about the climate change and the climate um, catastrophe? Is it about the Palestinian-Israeli conflict? Is it about the Ethiopian people in Israel who suffer from crazy violence of the police? Is it about the, the women's struggle? Is it about the animals? Is it about many different kinds of things? And uh, we uh, travel a lot around Israel, Dov and me, we already did more than 100 uh, Q&As, more than 100 mm. public discussions with audience after the screening of the film in the past uh, six months. And uh, every time when people ask him this question, he say, there is no hierarchy. I, I believe everything is important. You cannot tell the um, if you cannot tell the Palestinians no wait with your struggle because now I'm dealing with the climate change. Right. And you cannot tell the environmental people no wait now with the climate change because first we have to deal with the um, it's all interconnected. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. And, so and, all the struggles are connected. And right. This is actually what is dealing with right now, like gathering all the forces and all the struggles. And again, he's so infectious. We, we're, we're seeing you and behind you is this picture of Dove on this uh, bicycle. And he's, you want to get on the bike with him. And let's go on and let's push the agenda and let's get on with it and live and love and uh, enjoy life. And we'll talk more about this, but uh, yeah, Bernie needs to see this movie. And, and one of the people that we've had on the show here, who uh, I admire tremendously, and we've done some events together and struggles and been in trials and protests together, Cornell West, who works closely with, um, with uh, Bernie, uh, um, he's gonna see this movie. Uh, and, and let's see what we can do, because these two need to get together. Uh, Reverend I agree. Reverend William Barber as well needs to see this, so the Poor People's Campaign. Please, please, uh, please absolutely. Help me to we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. Now, listen. We could spend. We. <laughs> this is so wonderful to talk about this this uh, documentary. Let's talk about some of your other work. Some of your. You mentioned you met Dove back in two thousand three. That's when you and your brother really started hooking up and and producing these incredible documentaries. Tell us a couple of the things that you were working on. You won an Academy Award, right, from the Israel Academy Award for your movie uh, in 2003? Is that correct? Uh, we won, we, we won uh, um, actually three times the Academy Award in Israel. Uh, once it was uh, for my brother Tomer's first big film he created almost 20 years ago called It Kind of Scares Me. It was yeah. broadcasted, by the way, on, on PBS in the USA. Right. Uh, won many awards all over the world and it's a very very beautiful and optimistic story about 
very tough situation here in Israel. And uh, then um, we won another uh, Academy Award in Israel uh, with a film I produced called Life in Steels, directed by Tamar Tal. Very beautiful film, again, about um, uh, 96 years old um, woman who runs uh, the legendary photo house here in Israel and share a very interesting uh, life story, to say the least, with her grandson, Ben. And um, it was also quite a big success in cinemas, in festivals all over the world. Brock, and just for, lately, for lately uh, less than a year ago, we oh. won uh, the Academy Award with uh, Jonathan Agassi Saved My Life, directed by my, my brother Tomer and produced by me. Um, crazy story about a gay porn star and his relationship with his mother and with the drug addiction and with the sex industry and with himself and with Israel and many other uh, elements and topics inside of it. And uh, the first film we ever uh, directed together, uh, Tomer and me, you mentioned 2003. This is, that was the year when I first met Dov, the main protagonist of Komodo Dov. That was also the year when we started to work together, um, me and my brother Tomer, on a film called Bridge Over the Vadi, which was also uh, broadcasted in the USA in PBS and uh, was all over the place. And he told the beautiful story of the very first uh, bilingual, binational elementary school for Jewish and Arab kids uh, inside an Arab village in Israel. Uh, this is the poster of it. You can see, I'm very proud of it. Bridge over the Vadi. <laughs> um, it's a film that I'm very, very, very uh, proud of. And actually, uh, maybe it's going also to be our next project, because I'm dreaming now to go back to those kids um, 15 years later and to see what, what's happened to them and, and, and how this, um, how this, this school, the Jewish yeah. art school, affected uh, their life. Now I'm a father of a five and a half years old kid who is going to the same kind of uh, school where half of the pupils are Jews and half of them are Arabs, and, and I find it uh, beautiful. And uh, ever since then, we produced and directed uh, together, my brother Tomer and, and myself, more than 20 different documentaries. Some of them um, are one-offs, some of them are series, some of them for cinema, some of them for TV, some of them for the internet. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I love my work. I really do. Tell us a little more about the school. Uh, tell us a little more about how you came to, uh, to pick this school and to uh, talk about it and, and uh, film it. And what are they attempting to do there? It's binational, bilingual. How has it been working? Well, um, you know, Israel is not um, only for Jewish people. It's not only for Palestinian people. It's for both. Um, the majority of the people inside of Israel um, are Jews. But um, when the Jewish people uh, came here after they suffered so much, um, in Germany and in Poland and in many other places in Europe um, from the Nazis, they came to Palestine. It wasn't empty state. There were many people here, Palestinians. And um, this piece of land has to be shared by both of those nations, by both of those people. And uh, for many, 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 many years, there is a terrible war uh, that's uh, killing many, many innocent people. And uh, this is the most sad and um, depressing thing about this place, among other sad and depressing things about this place. But this Israeli-Palestinian conflict is probably the most terrible thing which is happening here. And any kind of initiate of people, Palestinians and Israelis, um, to try and fight the racism and the discrimination 
um, is something which um, brings hope uh, to, to, to our life. And when we heard, Tom and my brother and myself, uh, from a very, very good friend of us, Faisal, his name, the Palestinian man, Palestinian who lives in Israel, um, in a place called Kfar Kara, Kara village, um, that he's going to build a school for Jews and Arabs together. We told him, what are you on? Like, what kind of psychedelic drug you, you took this morning? Like, who the hell is going to send his kid to this school? You are not aware of, of the situation, man. People hate each other. People are afraid of each other. People don't want to get together. I mean, it's a great idea, but it's not going to happen. Forget about it. You're wasting your time. And he told us, he looked at my eyes, he looked at Tomer's eyes, and he told both of us, on my dead body, my kids are not going to go through the same nightmare which I went through in the educational system in Israel, which is a ridiculous system, because you have to understand that um, Arab people who live in Israel um, are not allowed to learn about their own heritage and about their own history. Um, and this is just unbelievable. And I'm not even talking about the fact that for a very, very, very bad, racist, ugly, crazy reasons, um, the Jewish pupils in Israel, and I am one of them, of course, um, don't learn how to read and write and speak Arabic. They do teach a little bit, but not in a way that anyone gets anything. And imagine what kind of life we would have here if everybody would talk the two languages. Now, most of the Arabs, almost all of them, speak fluent Hebrew and read and write because this is their way to survive in this country because if they want to get good jobs, they need to, to, to know good Hebrew, and they do. But 99% of the Jewish people who live in Israel, and I'm one of those 99%, uh, don't know how to speak Arabic and don't know how to read and write Arabic. And this is this is just so sad and so crazy and so ridiculous. Now, there are so many countries in the world when people learn two languages. It's not so complicated. Right. Um, but there is a political reason why the Israeli governments throughout all the years don't want the Jewish people to know Arabic because they don't want Jewish people to get too close to Arab people. They, they, they actually prefer to keep dividing those two different communities. And when you don't know someone's language, um, it's much easier to be afraid of him because you just don't understand what is he talking about and all what the media is showing you or almost, <coughs> sorry, all what the mainstream media is showing you is bad things about those people. So you grow up to be someone who believes that there is no way to get together. And wow. then when people are uh, creating such a school with such a different agenda, <clears throat> it is definitely something which worth documenting. And uh, I'm very, very, very uh, pleased and honored um, to be the one that together me with my brother Tomer had the privilege to document the first year of this school, Bridge Over the Vadi. And I'm very, very grateful for my brother Tomer who dragged me into this world of documentary filmmaking and convinced me to work with him together on this film because when we started to work on this film, I had no idea about filmmaking and um, I just followed my instincts and followed my big brother. I had no idea what I'm doing, and I did many mistakes, but that was my university, this film. And I'm very proud of it, and um, I'm also very proud of the fact that many people who watch this film, Bridge Over the Vadi, uh, get into different conclusions. Some people see this film and say, wow, what a beautiful, optimistic piece of art. It really gives us hope and good 
feeling to our heart. And other people in the same screening will tell you, what a depressing film. If those people are not able to find a way to get together, then there is no hope at all, not only in Israel or Palestine, but all over Israel. <coughs> Sorry. Barack, sir, so listen, I listen. believe that's a good... It, it's a beautiful, beautiful movie. I've seen it myself. Uh, let me ask you a couple of questions here. So when you say, has this been a, a, a coherent policy from the beginning of, this, of the origins of the state, the uh, Likud party, right, left, labor, have they been practicing this sort of separation from the very, very beginning? And I also want to make it clear to our audience that um, you also produced another incredible movie called I Shot My Love, which is about your own grandfather, right, escaping from Nazi Germany uh, to Palestine. So your position is that you love Israel. It's neat. Are, are you, would you call yourself a political Zionist? Or I don't want to get caught in labels here, but um, you are not an enemy of the state. And yet, are you part of, a, of, a, of a, an effort to, for example, have a two-state solution? Is that still possible, do you believe? Wow, you are asking a very, very complicated questions, which we would need like five hours of conversation to even just start. Uh, well, let's digging. start. Let's start a little. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know what uh, being Zionist means. If being Zionist means that uh, Israel is the state of Jewish people and Jewish people should have more rights than non-Jewish people, I am not only not Zionist, but I'm anti-Zionist. Right. Because I don't believe I should have any more rights than uh, any um, Arab person who was born here, and this is his land, at least, sometimes actually even more, but let's say at least uh, it's his land as it's my land, and I don't want to have any rights any single little right more than he has. And if being Zionist means that Israel is a democracy for Jewish people, then I don't want to be part of it and I don't believe in Zionism at all. If being Zionist means loving this place and trying to make it a great place, then I am an ultra-Zionist. Because mm -hmm. I love this place, because this is the place where I was born, where my parents were born, and this is the place where the people I love the most in, on this planet are living. And this is the place I care the most about, and this is the place where I want to live my life. And this is the place I'm, I'm willing to, to fight for making it a better place. And I am connected to every um, corner of it. So if this means being a Zionist, then I'm a Zionist. So I don't know, people have different ideas, different conceptions about being Zionist. But I, I can just tell you that I hate the idea that because I'm Jewish, um, then let's say the uncle of my mother I'm just inventing now one, okay? Right, right. Um, who lives in, I don't know, Uruguay or Chile or uh, I don't know where, somewhere far away. Brooklyn. And Brooklyn. And <laughs> he doesn't speak Hebrew. He was never here, not even once in his life. He doesn't really care about this place. He has no real connection to this place. He was born somewhere else and, and he never wanted to live here and he is not part of this place, but he's Jewish. It makes no sense at all for me that because the law of uh, return, Chok Ashvut, we call it in Hebrew, he will always be a very welcome guest here and whenever he wants, he can come here and get his citizenship and get all the rights of a citizen of the state of Israel just because he's Jewish. And while my great, great friends and neighbors here in Jaffa, here in Israel, um, that their parents or their 
grandparents were born here, were born here, right. and were either escaping from the war at 1948 or were kicked out violently by us, they can only dream about coming back here and being citizen. This is not equalness. This is not democracy. This is not justice. This is racism. And if this is what Zionism is about, then I'm totally against. So I don't like to use those words like Zionism and post-Zionism and anti-Zionism because it's very delicate and dangerous game. I, I like to talk about values, about, um, I don't know, dreams, about reality, but about things which you can define in simple, simple words. So I am Israeli, I am Jewish, not because I choose to be, not because I believe in God, not because I practice, just because it happened this way. Okay. And it's fine. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm right. proud of it. It's just one more piece of my um, identity. Um, and I want my country, I want my states to be good to all the people and not only to the people of my kind. And as long as it won't be, I will keep on fighting. And uh, the fact that I criticize the policy of the Israeli government and the fact that I'm so much against what the Israeli army is doing and the fact that I believe people should not go to this army and the fact that I really hope that my kid will never agree to be part of this army as long as this army is being so active and so cruel in this occupation factory doesn't mean that I am any less patriot than any other person. In my eyes, it actually means that I am more patriot because I believe that the only way for securing the future of this place is by fighting like crazy for uh, achieving peace. And achieving peace is not something um, you do with uh, crazy weapons. It's something you do with um, love and with willingness to give up things and, uh, des and having desire to share what you have with others because you don't believe that you should have anything more than others just because you're Jewish. Very, very well spoken. I, I agree with you a thousand percent. Let me ask you a couple other questions in terms of what's going on in Israel. Now, um, familiar with the Women Wage Peace Movement. Well, I wonder if you could comment on that. Also, when I was teaching at Yeshiva University, I invited uh, Guy Grossman, who was one of the uh, Refusenik leaders at that time in the Israeli Defense Force. Um, very courageously uh, res uh, refused to uh, uh, serve in the occupied territories. Tell me a couple, uh, tell me about those movements and any others you'd like to uh, tell us about that's going on in Israel in terms of peace, the peace movement. Well, there are many, many great peace movements, maybe not enough, uh, maybe they should unite somehow, but. Um, there is one movement which I, I basically adore, and it's called Betzelem. I don't really know how to say it in English, hmm. uh, but they are doing like just unbelievable job, uh, basically about um, revealing the truth about many things which our government have a very strong um, interest to hide. Um, there is another movement called Yesh Din, which are doing very specific uh, work in the occupied territories and make sure that, uh, I don't know how to say it, terrible things mm -hmm. will stop, even though it's impossible to do, but you have to try and, and good things will be. I, I don't describe it well in English. It's very No, no, we understand. Is the Refusenik movement still alive? 
The Refusenik Movement is alive, yeah. mm, so but I don't know, very limited kind of life. Um, if I could afford myself to not working and to dedicate myself uh, fully to one direction of activism, mm -hmm. I think I would spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time of my life in this um, Refusenik movement thing because I really believe that if there were many, many people, Absolutely. I'm talking about Jewish Israeli people, Absolutely. who would say we don't agree, we, we are not willing to be part of this terrible, terrible, terrible system of occupation and killing, I think it would make a difference. Uh, but it's very easy to say, it's very easy to say, you know, because I, yeah. I was also part of it. I didn't do anything crazy because I was in the office. I didn't do anything like really with any meaning. But at the age of 18, I also didn't have like so much of a political awareness. And for sure, I was not politically um, involved. And I served three years in the army. It's true that I didn't do much, but still I had this uniform. Now, when I see it, I'm, I have to be honest, I'm ashamed because I think the Israeli army is uh, doing terrible, terrible, terrible things. Now, it's not the fault of the soldiers. It's right. the first, firstly, it's the fault of the decision makers, the, the, the parliament members, the, the ministers, the prime ministers throughout the years. The soldiers are just kids who are like doing what they need kind of to do, otherwise they will go to jail. Um, right. So I'm trying to remind it to myself, but, but, but every time when I hear about an 18 years old boy or a girl who refuse to go to the army because of ideological reasons. I admire those people and, and, and I, I envy them for being such a great people who are willing to pay a very, very, very heavy personal price for um, doing something they believe in and for being the people they, they wish to be. And I, I very much hope that my my two kids will 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 be like those people okay. so courageous and so you're right on barack you're right on to this because it certainly did make a a, a difference during the vietnam war with the with the protests among uh, american soldiers as well and one of the reasons we don't have a strong an, an anti-war movement in the united states is because we have the lack of that in the military today but hear yourself talk this sounds like a new project a new documentary about the Refusniks. You, you, about the Refusniks. There so you go. I, you've just you've just named your next project. I know you're probably doing a number of things, but sounds like a natural for you, right? No, actually, actually, it 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 it, it might it might be a good idea, and I hmm. promise to give you a credit at the end. Oh, please, please. Oh, the Refusniks. All I we would love to have the movie. We want to interview you. We and <laughs> that, that that reminds you. What what are there some are there American Jewish groups uh, that you identify with that you, you, you can relate to in terms of some of the struggles, some of the connections between Israel and, and, and America? I, I'm not too yeah. much aware of the situation in the USA. Yeah, I understand. Uh, even though many great memories of my life are in the USA because I lived there for two years in New Orleans and in New York. Right. Uh, back late in the 90s, like more than 20 years ago. Um, but I can say that the NIF, the New Israeli Fund, um, is a very, very, very great organization, which I'm very okay. proud of. And in some ways, I am connected to them. And uh, they are doing just an amazing uh, job, and they are supporting a very great initiate and a very great activities. And it's completely, completely, unbelievably stupid and 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 tragic yeah. that uh, they became for many Israeli people a symbol of something which is like 
against Israel, while actually everything they do right. is so much, so much about I, actually protecting and supporting Israel. I understand. The way I Barack, Barack, we only have a minute or so left, so I want to make sure we get everything in here. Um, I'm but there are many more things to say. I, I know, many. I know. We're going to have to have you on. Maybe you'll come on with Dove as well. well but, but here's what I want to say. Um, I'm familiar with the group. We're going to have them on the show as well. Uh, gee, in the last minute, Rashid Khalidi is the Palestinian scholar is coming on next week. Is there any, I don't know if you're familiar with his work, any question or comment you would like to make that I can uh, give him in I, terms? Look, this morning, just a couple of hours ago, I was demonstrating with great friends of mine in front of the Shalom court in Jerusalem because a very great friend of ours is, is arrested now, Jonathan Pollack. He is a true hero for me. He is, he is the one human being I wish to be like. And um, he is someone who is so much involved in the struggle to end the occupation and to achieve uh, peace and, and equalness and justice. Barack, Barack, I'm so See, sorry. I want everybody to know Go ahead. That we cannot uh, give up. We're not. We're not. Don't worry about it. We're, we're carrying on. Thank you so very, very much. When you come to New York, we're going to get together. We'll have Dove on in a few weeks. Peace. Thank you so very, very much. And thank you all for, for watching Barack Hyman on the Radical Imagination. This is Jim Vredos. We'll see you again next week with Rashid Khalidi on the Radical Imagination. Take care. Yeah.